Hello, good evening. Hello, good evening. Good evening. Good evening. How are you? Good evening. Okay. Fine, thank you. I'm excellent and you. I'm really good. That is a good thing that you are feeling good in this second session. We are going to continue with this course. Vamos a continuar. Eh, estamos en la sesión número dos. Yesterday we were talking about months, dates, and also we were talking about be going to. Now we are going to continue with the part of be going to. We are going to see the different structures of the be going to. Then we are going to talk about reducing the use of going the be going to because we are going to see another way to use or to um, express the be going to in English. And also we are going to talk about dates. Um, in this case, it's like holidays in the US. So we are going to talk about holidays in the United States of America. And if we have time, we're going to make a review of the WH words. Así que tenemos bastante. Ah, ok. Thanks eh, for eh, telling me that. Eh, vamos a tener varias cosas, ¿verdad? Mm, vamos a tener un poco de información. Primero vamos a comenzar haciendo un pequeño review del be going to, que ya lo hablábamos ayer, pero solo en preguntas. Hoy vamos a ver las tres estructuras diferentes que tenemos del be going to. Vamos a hacer unos pequeños ejercicios con el be going to. They are not very difficult. They are very, very easy and simple. Then we are going to hear. Vamos a escuchar un cambio en la pronunciación del be going to, que nos va a ayudar a sonar más eh, natural a la hora de hablar en inglés. And then we are going to talk about holidays in the U.S. Vamos a hablar de las fiestas, de las celebraciones de Estados Unidos. Vamos a ver algunas, no todas, porque there are a lot of uh, holidays in the U.S. And some of these holidays are not in the whole country. Um, give me a second. I, 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 I'm going to see if I can share the, the link of the group of WhatsApp. Um, then we are going to see if we have time, we are going to see the WH words to create questions. Vamos a ver si nos queda tiempo o si no lo vamos a hacer hasta mañana de hablar de las WH words, de las palabras que utilizamos eh, al inicio de nuestras preguntas. Vamos a hacer un review de ellas, de cómo se utilizan, para qué fin se utilizan y hacer algunos ejemplos. So now we are going to begin with the WH, I mean, we are going to begin with the be going to topic. In this case, I'm going to share the structure for the three different ways in which we can use be going to. Uh, for the positive, negative, and also the question that was the topic that we were developing yesterday. We are going to um, see what are the structures, some examples, um, in which cases we're going to use be going to, and then we're going to have the three different exercises. Así que vamos a empezar con las estructuras de positivo, negativo, pregunta, para qué lo utilizamos, y luego vamos a ver unos pequeños ejercicios. So, let's begin with that part. I'm going to share the screen, and we are going to begin with the structures. Okay, here we have the document in which we are working. So, we're going to continue with the topic we're going to. So, let's put here to be going to.
structures. Estas son las estructuras que vamos a seguir nosotros para crear oraciones con el be going to. The first structure that we are going to see is positive. For the positive uh, sentence, we are going to use the subject plus B plus going to plus complement. Esa es la estructura, el sujeto el verbo be en la forma correcta, dependiendo del sujeto que estemos utilizando, going to y el complemento que vamos a utilizar para hacer nuestra oración. Vamos a ver algunos ejemplos. I'm going to move this one to the next page. This is going to be better. So, examples. We're going to use the same complement for all these examples. But we are just going to change the subject. Solo vamos a cambiar los sujetos y todo lo demás va a ser igual en nuestros ejemplos. So let's see. I, in this case, I'm going to use I. Then the verb to be is am. Um, I am. And then we're going to write going to. I am going to. Watch TV. That is the sentence. I'm going to watch TV. Very, very simple sentence. Then we're going to change the subject. You are going to watch TV. Then he is going to watch TV. So, and in this case, if I have the third person singular, it is not necessary. Oh, okay, good. Uh, be careful because you are driving. Okay, in this case, I have the third person singular. Why I'm not changing the verb and I'm not changing the way I'm writing the sentence? ¿Por qué no estoy cambiando la forma en la que escribo el verbo y, y la estructura de la tercera persona en singular aquí cuando estoy utilizando el he? Porque sabemos que eh, la regla de la tercera persona es que yo le voy a agregar s, es y es al final. En este caso, because I am using the going to, That is like an auxiliary that I am using for this sentence. So in that case, I don't need to change anything. Si nosotros tenemos auxiliares, como en este caso estamos utilizando el going to, um, o alguna estructura en específico, nosotros no vamos a cambiarle nada al verbo que viene después. En ese caso ya no es necesario agregar la regla de la tercera persona. Solo cuando el verbo es inmediatamente después del verbo to be, en este caso, es que le vamos a cambiar o agregar eh, los finales, pero en este caso no es necesario. Then we have she is going to watch TV. Then we have it is going to watch TV. Then we we are going to watch TV. And the last one, they they are going to watch TV. So in this case, we have the positive sentence with the structure that we have here, the subject, the B, 
going to and the complement. In this case, we can also have this structure with this one. If you're not going to write the complete sentence, you can add um. Your is she is it's where and your I mean there. So that's the short form to write the sentences. So in that case, you can use the contractions to make uh, the sentence. Tell me, Tatiana. Una pregunta, ¿en qué caso ocupa? ¿Para qué caso se ocupa el going to? Es cuando está hablando. In this case, we're going to see that part also. Uh, when we are talking about things that we are planning to do in the future. Cuando estamos hablando de cosas que estamos planeando, son planes que vamos a hacer en un futuro, pero inmediato, no en un futuro eh, muy lejano. En ese caso son cosas que vamos a hacer. Eh, puede ser, eh, digamos, estamos hablando en la mañana, esta tarde, en la noche, mañana, el fin de semana, pero son planes para el futuro. Así como en este caso, I'm going to watch TV. Voy a ver la televisión. ¿Cuándo? Maybe after the class. O tomorrow morning. Or something like that. So, para ese caso utilizamos el going to. Ah, y, ah, si en dado caso es a un futuro un poco lejano, el will. El will, exactamente, el will. Y también el will lo utilizamos cuando no estamos seguros de que vaya a suceder como nosotros lo hemos pensado. Es algo que no está 100% seguro de que vaya a pasar. En cambio, el going to sí es algo que estamos seguros de que va a suceder. Gracias. You're welcome. Okay, now we are going to be, or I, I mean, we are going to see the negative. Number two, negative. And in this case, did you know that when we are writing sentences in negative, we are going to use almost the same structure as the positive one, but adding not. Solo le vamos a agregar el not a la estructura que ya tenemos en el positivo. En este caso, como no estamos utilizando eh, do, no estamos utilizan, utilizando eh, has, no estamos utilizando ninguno de esos, sino que simplemente le vamos a agregar el not. Porque no estamos uh, utilizando ningún otro auxiliar. So, we are going to have the structure. That is subject. Plus B. And here is the difference. In this case, we are going to have not. Plus going to. Plus complement. Así que como pueden notar, solo le estamos agregando el not a la estructura que ya tenemos en positivo. So, in this case, I'm going to take all of these sentences. I'm going to put the sentence here. And I'm going to change the way I'm writing. In this case, I'm going to add not. I am not, or I'm not, in this case, I'm not, going to watch TV. You are not going to watch TV, he is not going to watch TV, she is not going to watch TV, it is not, we are not, and they are not. So, very simple, we're just adding not after the verb to be. Solo le vamos a agregar el not después del verbo to be. Simple, simple, simple. Ya tenemos las estructuras, simplemente en el negativo le agregamos el not. Y para las preguntas, ya lo veíamos ayer, vamos a cambiar la forma en la que escribimos. Let me see. Oh, 
Eh, let me see, let me see, let me see. Denis, Claudio acaba de compartir el enlace de, del documento. Si lo puede abrir en este momento porque ella hizo el favor de, de compartirlo. Pero él sí puede accesar al documento. Ok. Eh, in the questions, you know that when we are not using WH words, eh, we are going to use in this case the verb to be. En este caso no estamos utilizando las WH words, que son las palabras que utilizamos para las preguntas en inglés. En este caso estamos utilizando el verbo to be. Así que lo primero que vamos a hacer es tomar la oración que ya tenemos en positivo, pero le vamos a cambiar el orden en el que vamos a escribir el verbo to be y el sujeto. Es lo único que le vamos a cambiar. El orden del verbo to be y del sujeto. But let me write the structure. Question. And we have verb to be at the beginning, then the subject. Then we are going to continue with the same structure that we have here that is going to plus complement plus question mark. En este caso sí vamos a utilizar la question mark o el signo de interrogación al finalizar la pregunta. Solo el de finalizar. En este caso no utilizamos el de apertura porque en inglés no se usa el de apertura, simplemente el de cierre. So, in this case, let me take this sentence because I'm going to make the change of the order. Vamos a cambiarle el orden. Here we have, I am going to watch TV. If I'm going to write this sentence in a question, I'm going to change the order. I'm going to write, am I going to watch TV? Y ahí está la pregunta. Simplemente vamos a cambiar el orden del inicio de nuestra oración. Am I going to watch TV? ¿Voy a ver yo la televisión? No, maybe not. Maybe yes. I don't know. So, we're going to continue with the other uh, sentence. So here we have the questions. So in that case, it's following the same structure as the positive. So in, in this case, it's not going to change a lot. No lo vamos a cambiar mucho, sino que simplemente vamos transformando el prim la primera estructura que ya tenemos según eh, la necesidad. En este caso, si es negativa o si es pregunta. Pero en ese caso, eh, si nos enfocamos en lo que es la, la positive structure, We have the base for the sentence that we are going to create in negative and in, in question. Now, we are going to write just the use in this case because uh, you asked about the use of the going to. And in this case, I'm going to write it here because you need to keep in mind what is the use of the going to. So here we use the going to And we're going to write to talk about things we are planning to do in the future. So here we have para 
cosas que estamos planeando hacer en el futuro. That is the use that we are going to give to the be going to. So, now I'm going to write the exercises. I have three exercises for you and I'm going to write one by one. Vamos a hacer tres ejercicios, pero no son ejercicios así como que, oh my God, very, very hard to, to complete. Son ejercicios bastante sencillos. El primero, in this case, you are just going to tell me what is the uh, correct form of the verb to be. Solo me van a decir en el primero cuál es la forma correcta del verbo to be que necesita esa oración. In the second one, we are going to make negative sentences. Vamos a hacer oraciones negativas siguiendo las estructuras. And in the exercise number three, I'm going to write two parts. Two parts of the sentence. Van a ser dos partes de una misma oración. La vamos a escribir separadas. Y ustedes me van a ir diciendo cuál es la mejor opción para completar esas oraciones. Pero vamos a hacer la primera parte. I'm going to write the sentence. Voy a ir escribiendo las oraciones. Cuando termine de escribirlas, les voy a dar dos minutos, I think. Para que las vuelvan a leer y digan, ah, en esa oración va is, o va are, o va eh, am. Dependiendo del sujeto que tengamos. And then, when the two uh, minutes have passed, cuando ya pasen los dos minutos, I'm going to ask, I will uh, let you tell me the answers. Ustedes me van a ir diciendo las respuestas de las oraciones. So, I'm going to write this sentence, I'm going to read it, and then you are going to think about the answer. Así que vamos a comenzar.
So here we have the sentence. We have two, four, six, eight, nine. We have nine sentence here. Yes, tenemos nueve oraciones. Let's read the first one. I going to do my homework. What you going to do on Sunday? My friends going to come. Your teacher going to buy a car. When we going to leave? It going to rain. Her brother going to play. Where your parents going to travel? And she going to set the table. Les voy a dar unos minutos para que vayan ustedes analizando el sujeto de cada una de las oraciones para que me digan cuál es el verbo to be que corresponde a esas oraciones. Así que les doy un par de minutos, ya les aviso, para que me den la respuesta. So, let's begin. I know that some of you has the answers already because I have uh, the answers on uh, the chat. I have one of you that have finished uh, the exercise already. So let's see. Vamos a ver una por una y ver cuál es la respuesta correcta. And the first one, I going to do my homework. What is the uh, correct uh, form of the verb to be? ¿Cuál es la forma correcta del verbo to be en la primera? Yeah. I am. I am going Good. to um, do um, my work. 
That's oh, good. I'm going to do my homework. And the second one, what you're going to do on Sunday? Are, what are you going to do on Sunday? Good. What are you going to are do, you on going to do on Sunday? Perfect. Number three, my friends going to come. My friends, my are, friends going are, are going to come. Are. Are. Good. Perfect. Next one, your teacher going to buy a car. Are your teacher going to buy a car? Is your teacher going to buy a car? Is your teacher going to buy a car? Is your teacher going to buy a car? So in this case, it's not R, porque no estamos utilizando el you, sino que decimos tú. ¿De quién? Pues de él o de ella. Is your teacher going to buy a car? Next one. When we going to leave? Uh, when are we going to leave? Next one. It. It is going to rain. Good. It is going to rain. Perfect. Next one. Her brother is going is to play. Her is going her brother going to play? play? Is her brother? Yes, yeah, is her brother going to play? Mm -hmm. Next one. When are your parents going to travel? Where, Where is our are, are, are parents, parents going to travel? travel? Good. Where are your parents going to travel? Next one. And the last one of this ex exercise number one. She's, she's going, going to set the table. table. Good. She's going mm. to set the table. Perfect. Very, very good. We're going to see the exercise number two. In this case, we're going to use negative. Vamos a hacer el, ex el ejercicio número dos. En este caso, vamos a hacer negativos. I mean, de, de, de or la oración va a ser negativa para nosotros. Exercise two, and we're going to see negative. And in this case, in the negative part, I have like the beginning and the ending. Solo le voy a poner el principio y el final y ustedes van a construir lo demás. Ustedes van a ver qué es lo que le falta a la oración. En ese caso ya saben que es el verbo to be, el negativo y algo más. So I'm going to write just the beginning and the ending of the sentence. Let's see. Eh, sí, recuerden que ya está el enlace del documento en el grupo. Ustedes lo único que tienen que hacer es entrar al enlace y ahí inmediatamente se actualiza la información para que ustedes vayan viendo todo lo que estamos viendo en las clases. Así que no es necesario que yo les esté mandando toda la semana. Eso sí, creo que en la segunda semana o tercera semana sí se lo voy a mandar de nuevo porque a veces eh, no se actualiza a tiempo. Pero ahorita yo creo que si ustedes entran, eh, encuentran ya toda esta información que tenemos en este momento. So let's see the negative part. We are going to see the sentence. In this case, you can uh, write the things that you want to put in the sentence. So in this case, it's not like uh, we have just one, um, one answer for this sentence. In este caso, ustedes van a ponerle sus ideas. No simplemente es una idea, sino que ustedes van a ver qué es lo que necesita esta oración. Let's begin with the sentence. Ya casi.
So here we have the uh, beginnings and the endings of the sentence in this case. If you follow the structure, you know what are the three elements that uh, are missing on the sentence. Tenemos tres elementos que se han perdido en esa oración. Ustedes ya saben cuáles son porque van siguiendo la estructura para los negativos. Ya saben cuáles son las tres cosas que nos faltan en medio de esa oración para completarla. Así que think about the uh, answers and I will give you two minutes. Dos minutos y damos la respuesta a estas oraciones porque sé que ustedes ya saben la respuesta. Así que dos minutos y vamos con las respuestas. Okay, let's see. What are the elements or the parts that are missing? ¿Cuáles son las partes que nos faltan en la primera? Is, is going to not going to not going to sleep. Good. She is not going to sleep. Very good. Thank you, Jonathan. Then, número dos. I, I am not, I am not, not going to eat some chips. I'm going to not going to eat some chips. Very good. Number three, my mom. My, my mom is not going to cook. Is not cook. going to cook. Okay. Going My mom cook. is not going to cook. Number four, the children. The, the children, children are not children going, to going to play. Going to play. Good. The children are not going to play. Remember that children is in a uh, plural. Oh. You. You, you are not are going to go home. To go home. You go aren't home. going to go home. Ah, good. You are not going to go home. Number six, the cat. The cat, the cat is cat not isn't going to run. Going to run. Uh -huh. the, the cat, it is, is not going to go home. The cat is not going to run. Number seven, eat. It is not to snow. Not going to snow. It is not going to snow. No va a nevar. Number eight. We, we are not, we are not going, going to make the best. Mm -hmm. 
We are not going to make the beds. No vamos a arreglar las camas. And the last one, John. Not John is not John going is to not, cry. He's not, not going to cry. He's not going Perfect. to cry. Good, very good. Okay. Let's see. Vamos a dejar el ejercicio 3. Yo se lo voy a colocar en el documento. Ustedes lo van a encontrar ahí para que lo lean. No lo vamos a hacer en este momento, sino que lo vamos a leer detenidamente después. Eh, porque vamos a pasar a lo que es el, el video de la explicación de cómo podemos hacer nosotros para reducir el uso del going to. Vamos a ver otra forma de utilizar el going to eh, o cómo lo podemos pronunciar en inglés. When we are talking. So, let me go to the video that I have uh, already here, but I need to change that um, the window in this case. And we're going to hear the uh, explanation. Vamos a escuchar la explicación sobre la pronunciación. In this case, it's called pronunciation reduction of going to. Es la reducción del going to. Así que vamos a ver what is this. Vamos a escucharlo y luego vamos a explicar un poco sobre él. So, don't worry. Lo tengo en 0.75. ¿Está bien en esa, en esa velocidad? Yes. Sí, está bien. Yes. Yes. Ok. Ok. We're going to listen the explanation. Let's see. Just I need to move this one and we are. Hi everyone. In this class you learn how to sound natural when talking about future plans by reducing be going to. Let's start by listening to the pronunciation of going to. Reduction of going to. Are you going to have a party? No. I'm going to go out with a friend. Are you going to go to a restaurant? Yes. We're going to go to Nick's Cafe. When spoken, going to is usually going to sound as gonna. Let's analyze the examples one more time. Are you going to have a party? No, I'm going to go out with a friend. Are you going to go to a restaurant? Yes, we're going to go to Nick's Cafe. As I mentioned in a previous class in which I talked about pronunciation. Pronunciation is one of the most difficult to learn in English. And this is because there are many exceptions to rules that we may mention. The best way to learn pronunciation is by listening carefully and repeating. Today's topic is quite universal. And if you want Okay, what is the thing with uh, this um, part? Uh, the thing is that we are talking about uh, the way we express our ideas when we are talking. Esta parte de la reducción del going to es cuando hablamos. Esto sí, hay que tenerlo bien en, en, en mente, que esto es más que todo cuando nosotros estamos conversando. No cuando estamos escribiendo, porque acuérdense que la escritura es, eh, lleva un lenguaje más formal. En este caso, when we are talking and we are using a going to, we are not going to say going to. We are going to say gonna. Vamos a decir gonna cuando estemos platicando con alguien con el que ya tenemos confianza. Are you gonna have a party? No vamos a decir, are you going to have a party? sino que vamos a decir, are you gonna have a party? 
porque estamos reduciendo. Vamos a hacer la reducción y es una forma más informal. Ahí viene la parte eh, importante. Es informal utilizar el gonna porque solo se hace, ¿verdad? Cuando estamos platicando. If, eh, He is saying that if you can watch your favorite TV show or your favorite movie in English, you are going to find that they use a lot gonna when they are talking. But when you are reading a book, you are not going to have that kind of vocabulary. At least if it is this kind of um, books that are for teenagers and in which you're going to find that vocabulary. Pero no siempre vamos a utilizar el, el gonna cuando estemos escribiendo, sino cuando son como historias juveniles con diálogos eh, muy informales, que sí lo vamos a encontrar en libros, pero normalmente no encontramos este lenguaje en los libros, sino que simplemente en los diálogos. Por eso en las películas, en las canciones y cosas así, se utiliza mucho el gonna. So, en este caso, simplemente es para speaking. When you are talking with someone, you are going to say gonna, not going to. So, in that case, it's just the uh, pronunciation part and the specification of the reduction of going to. Así que esta parte sí es bastante simple, bastante eh, corta, que es la reducción del going to. Let's see. Uh huh. That's a good example. Never gonna give you up. Yes, of course. And you can find a lot of a uh, expression like this in music. Also, it's true. So you know that you have an example there. Ahí ya tienen un ejemplo, verdad? En muchas canciones donde utilizan el gonna, pero es el mismo uso del going to, solo que de una forma más informal. Now, we have almost 11, 10 minutes, and we are going to begin with the part of the holidays. Vamos a hablar de los holidays o de las eh, celebraciones. Eh, en este caso son las más importantes. No vamos a ver todas porque there are a lot of celebrations in United States. And there are some celebrations that happen in, in specific places of the U.S. But in this case, I have the most common and also the most, uh, or maybe the uh, holidays that many of you have uh, here of them, or you know something about that celebration. So we are going to have like a list of names of the holidays and the date. Vamos a ver las fechas en las que se lleva a cabo esta celebración y el nombre. Vamos a hacer una pequeña lista de holidays. And I think that is going to be the last part of the session because we have just 10 minutes. So let's see. We're going to talk about the holidays. In this case, it is because in the platform you can find the topic holidays in the US because we are going to talk about those holidays. So let me move this one a little bit. Because I need you here. So here we are going to uh, have the holidays in the US and I'm going to make a table. Voy a hacer una, una, un cuadro con las celebraciones y las fechas. So we are going to see what are those holidays.
Yes, we are going to add the Independence Day. Vamos a hablar de eso. Halloween, good. También es otra que vamos a agregar. Let's see what are the holidays that we have here. In this case, we are going to begin with January because it's the first month and a lot of things. So we have New Year's Day, that is Christmas also. New Year's, I mean, here. New Year's Day, and in this case, I'm writing with small letters and I need a capital. En este caso, recuerden que todas estas fechas, eh, todos estos holidays van en, con inicial mayúscula. Labor Day also, good. We have January 1st. January 1st. Then we have Martin Martin Luther King Day. Martin Luther Luther King Day. This one is celebrated on January 17. January 17. Then we have Valentine's Day. Valentine's Day. I mean, Valentine's Day in February 14. Let me see. Yes, el día de San Valentín. February 14. Then we have President's Day. President's President's Day that is celebrated on February 21st. February 21st. Veteran Day, Mother's Day, Thanksgiving. Good. Then we have, let me see. In March, we have the Ash. Wednesday, yes, como el miércoles de ceniza. In this case, is celebrated on March second. Easter Day, creo que verdad. Easter Day. Um, Sí tiene que ver, pero en este caso sí es como el, el miércoles que nosotros conocemos como miércoles de ceniza. Ah, ok. Lo tienen como miércoles de ceniza. Mm -hmm. Then we have, in this case, March 4th is the Employee Appreciation Day. Employee, I mean, in this one, no, here, Employee. Es como el día de de, de apreciación del empleado. Employee Appreciation Day. That is celebrated on March 4th. March 4th. Let's see what I'm saying, a Holy Week. Yes, in this case we have a Holy Week and Father's Day. Yes, it exists. Uh, Holy Week, we are not going to um, add it here because in this case. Mm, second, second Monday, Sunday, perdón. Mm -hmm. Sí, pero acuérdense que como depende también de la, de la fecha en la que cae. Tell me. You raise your hand. Tell me. Can you please turn on your microphone? No, no se escucha. Ahora sí. 
Ah, ahora sí. I'm sorry. Uh, Independence Day. Yes, Independence Day. I'm going to add it. Don't worry, I have the, the dates. Don't worry, I'm going to put it in the um, in the table. Ya lo voy a poner, no se preocupen. Tengo más aquí. Oh. Eh, someone is saying, Thomas Jefferson's birthday is on April 13. Yes, they also have Black Weekend, but they are like on the last months, I guess. And also they have like... Uh, In different, in different months, I was uh, uh, reading, not in just one uh, specific month. No es por fecha, es no. por, es por la, la, la estación creo que les va a caer. O por... sí. sí, y también lo tienen en varias, en varias, eh, en varios meses. Yes, Saint Patrick's Day. Let's see, let's continue with this one. I have like, um, I found a page in which we can see all the, the celebrations and all the holidays that they have, and they specify in which places they have that celebration. Hay unas celebraciones que solo se dan por lugar en específico, digamos, solo se da en California, solo se da en Texas, y ahí también están especificados. So, en este caso vamos a hacer como los más comunes en todo el país, sin meternos en los, en los demás lugares. So, in this case, we are going to continue. We are in March 4th. Then we are going to see St. Patrick's Day. Someone was asking for St. Patrick's Day. St. Patrick's. El día de San Patricio. And this one is on March 17th. Seven is the end. I, oh my God, I moved this one. Is there a date in St. April? Yes. St. Patrick's Day. Okay, next one. We have here, we have National Vietnam War Veterans Day que es el día en que se conmemora a los veteranos de Vietnam, de la guerra de Vietnam. Veterans Vietnam War Veterans Veterans Day. This one is on March 29 March 29. King's Day. Mm, yes, it's in January. Then we have in May, we have two different celebrations. In this case, National Nurse Day. Tenemos el Día Nacional de la Enfermera. National Nurses. The day that is on May, May 6th. Then we have another one in May that is the Memorial Day. Memorial Day that is on May 30. May 30th. Then we have on June. Oh, I mean, I, I use this one, but we have a Mother's Day. In this case, I write it after. Mother's Day is on May 8th. Es diferente de acá porque acá es el 10 y ella es el 8. May 8th. Then we have also two more dates on May. The Armed Forces Day, las Fuerzas Armadas, Forces Day, that is on May 21st. And I'm going to write one more because it's time to end the session. 
And we have the National Maritime Day. National. Day. Oh. Teacher, faltó April in Easter day. Yes, I have more dates. Sí, okay. lo, vamos a, lo vamos a agregar. Se los voy a ir agregando porque tenía eh, poquitos para no alargarnos, okay. pero vamos a continuar mañana. And this one is May 22nd. So, in this case, we have some of the holidays, but we are going to continue tomorrow. We have Doctor's Day, Women's Day, yes. I'm going to add all of that uh, uh, holidays but we're going to continue with this information tomorrow. So we are going to end the session here and we are going to see each other tomorrow. Have a really good night. 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 Bye. Bye. See you tomorrow. Bye. See you tomorrow.